Welcome back everybody. So it is November. As I've been saying, it is already time to start planning our decor for our next year. And uh, I'm not joking, it is time. So I thought we would take a look at my Pinterest selections for the month of November. You know, this is something I try, or I, my goal is to do at least once a month, um, select new pins. But uh, I've been a little slacking. It looks like the last time we did this was in July. So we're definitely due for some good pins. And I was hoping that we'd find some good after Halloween pictures and pin ideas. Things that I can uh, borrow and incorporate into my design next year. Um, but let's go ahead, take a look at the pin boards. All right, so if you are not following me, you're certainly welcome to. My Pinterest name is Colonel Mustard. That's K-R-N-L-M-U-S-T-R-D. And as you can see, I do like to try and do monthly boards for my Halloween ideas. Um, usually I will try and pick some sort of theme, like this one was pirates, and we'll look at some pirate pins and so forth. But for November, it was just kind of a conglomeration of, of pins that I found. You know, I try and do a top 10 or so. Today's going to be like a top 21. But let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. I thought this was kind of cool. Definitely, it's not something I'm planning on doing. Um, but this man built this awesome looking spider web maze. It's great. He um, actually did a whole like page of, of how he did it. And you can you know, read through it and see... Um, but I thought he did an amazing job making this these frames and the spider webs make them look so realistic. I guess this was um, the page when you click on it. But he did it for like a community event. But look how these webs look so awesome. That is a great way to uh, make a pathway for people to follow that's kind of simple. I mean, it'd be very time consuming. Um, creating all of these these webs but uh, it looks awesome and you can see right through it so um, he was mentioning how like kids wouldn't get lost or scared because the moms and dads can stay outside and see them anyway it was an interesting read uh, if you're if you want to but now as we get a little more scary, I kind of liked this pin. It's a, I think there's something kind of frightening about always having somebody's back to you in a haunted house because you don't know, is that a prop? Is that a real person? What is that face going to look like if they turn around? There's just there's so much left to your imagination and um, the imagination is often far more scary than the realism. So that's kind of fun. Now, if there's one thing I want to try this year, it's to make a skeleton candelabra like this, like a full-size stand-up skeleton, which I'm assuming this is. Um, I've tried making candelabras in the past. It's kind of one of the things I like to do, uh, especially with these could be like little shan like mini chandeliers with the, uh, you know, the, I don't know what you call them, little candle holders on each one. So a couple of those get the guy with the skeleton holding them. It just looks so gothic and so creepy. That would definitely be a showstopper decoration. As with this, uh, more of an outside prop, but this is a fogger with these cool skeletons on the side, uh, just shooting the fog out of their mouths. That would be an amazing prop for any sort of cemetery. I do have, you know, my own cemetery. Oh, this is not one of my pins, but looking at that, that looks pretty awesome too. This one looks like a more elaborate version. Um, but anyway, I don't do these sort of full-size cemetery pieces. I just don't have the creativity to it, but um, that's an awesome pin to check out. I really love this pumpkin man. Now, in Home Depot this year, we kind of saw one of those really tall pumpkin men holding um, some pumpkin jack-o'-lanterns just like this. So this could be like a homemade version of that. Obviously, you're going to need some skill. Looks like there's probably a tutorial along with it of how it was made. But it couldn't be all that complicated. I mean, it's just looks like some wood pieces probably wrapped um, very easily with some black fabric. Stick a jack-o'-lantern on the top, have him hold some jack-o'-lanterns. Um, it's certainly impressive, and it seems like it's a doable project. This one may be a slightly simpler version, and it's got some creepy cloth added to it, and he's holding skulls, so I'm not sure which version I like better, holding the pumpkins or holding the skulls. So let me know in the comments below which one you prefer, because 
might be something, you know, I do have my pumpkin army that I, I have out each year. This might make an interesting addition to it. But if I weren't going to do a pumpkin army, actually, I think a zombie army would be even more scary and impressive. So this will be one of my future projects one of these years. Just a bunch of cutout zombies in the yard. Um, have my zombie army instead of my pumpkin army. I'm not a huge fan of Day of the Dead, but this lady is beautiful. Um, and I don't think, I mean, this looks like it's a prop. I don't think this is a costume, for sure. Um, so you've got your sticks making up this dress with a cape, some sort of sugar skull mask, and a headdress with a little bird on top. And it is beautiful. That would be also an amazing centerpiece to a display. I absolutely love this pen. It is, you know, a skeleton man walking spiders. You know, it's something I would never have thought of, but it's such an awesome idea as opposed to, you know, just walking the dogs. So this might be something I'll put out next year too, if I can find a, a way to sneak it into my design theme because it's just so cute and clever. Inside, I love having things coming out of my fireplace. I think it just makes a very creepy effect. Uh, and this one has bats. And they put bats all over the place. Um, that's going to be a lot of effort. You have to be very careful when you're attaching these things using the proper um, adhesives because sometimes you know, it'll pull the paint right off the wall. Even when I've used like blue tape, it's pulled paint off the wall. So you just have to be extra careful with that. This one's kind of fun. Instead of bats coming out of this the fireplace, we've got some sort of skeleton man. Again, another simple idea that looks like it's going to be very effective and very creepy. Or I think, I'm not sure if I've done this pin in the past, but as I was scanning along, I loved it again, if I did. Um, the eyes in the fireplace gives it a very monstrous appearance. And then I don't know what they've used. The, um, some sort of, I don't know, sticks or something in there with the lights. Very creepy. This was kind of fun too. One of those neat projects. It looks like it would be very, I mean, it looks like it's doable. I mean, you take some pieces of wood or something, cut them out and all these little shapes painted the same color as your wall. Um, but you've still got to attach this whole thing to the wall. If you use some sort of frame, I don't know, some sort of oval picture frame and just attach these things around it. It doesn't seem like it would be that hard. I'm not sure how they did the legs. Maybe screwed them in from the back side of the frame. But I think it's pretty neat. <laughs> I think it's probably the one of those pictures or one of these pins that probably looks a lot better in the pin than it would in real life because obviously... I mean, this would have to be like painted black or something and probably looks a little less realistic in real life. This lady's beautiful. Some sort of like Victorian-esque um, dress on a skeleton gives it a very fun appearance with her little lap dog. I think it's beautiful. I could definitely see that sitting in my entryway. And I imagine a few of these, like going up the stairs, where you have the skeleton popping out of the frame, holding the candle to light the way. I think that's beautiful. And honestly, we've seen things with skeletons coming out of the frames before, but this one actually looks very simple and doable. You've got your skeleton. Could I mean, this frame is pretty substantial. It could just be, you could drill a couple holes in the back of the frame and zip tie the skeleton there so he's not going anywhere. Hot glue his hands around a candle. And there you go. Pretty neat. And here is another version of the skeleton coming out of a mirror this time. But uh, he's serving a glass. So I thought this would be kind of, I, I really like having interesting backdrops to things. So, you know, if you were going to have a drinks table, you could have this guy right behind the drinks table. Like he's you know, filling the glasses and so forth. This was uber creepy. I'm not sure how doable this is, but 
you know, if you had a big space and, and I mean, what, what could this be made out of? You could use the furring strips to make little frames out of this um, and then just put, you know, you get those fake feet that you can find everywhere and then kind of give them a corpsey look. And uh, you've got a nice little uh, morgue situation going on here. Very scary, very cool. But speaking of scary, could you imagine walking into a bathroom and seeing this thing coming out of the toilet? I love it. I would definitely do this. They've gone the extra mile to put lots of cr uh, creepiness coming off the toilet. So not sure how just the head would look like sticking out of your toilet, but could be cool. All right, here we venture into the less scary, and these are milk jug witches. I haven't seen these before, but I think they're super cute. You just take a milk jug, paint it green, add, you know, some Sharpie marker faces, and this looks like they've used garbage bags to give them a little bit of body and a couple of Dollar Tree hats, and they are really cute. This one's holding some apples. Speaking of cute, this is a neat way to display your candy. I mean, I've put candy bowls out in the past, but you know, you could take a planter or something on a stand, just drape the sheath through it, add a couple of felt eyes and mouth, and then fill it with candy. And it just gives a little extra oomph to your Halloween candy bowl. And then last up, I thought this was kind of cute as well. You know, if you're having a little party for kids or something, just to have a nice little going away gift. This is free ghosts to good homes. So a couple of white or semi-translucent balloons with a couple of um, those little googly eyes on them. And you've got free ghosts. How cute is that? All right, so what did you think? Did any of these pins grab your attention? You know, I think over the years I've probably collected hundreds of these pins. I've done maybe three or four of the actual projects, but uh, you know, I'm gonna keep doing it because it keeps uh, keeps me thinking about all the fun things that I could be doing and keeps me thinking about Halloween all year round. So hopefully you'll join me in that. Again, my Pinterest is there for you to find if you want to follow along and let me know if you have that pin board as well, or a pin board I should say so that I can follow you and get some good ideas from you as well to, again, borrow in a future uh, Halloween haunt. But anyway, that's going to do it for today. Hopefully, I'll do another one of these pin boards next month. You know, we're getting closer to the holidays. I'm going to try and do a Halloween holiday-themed Halloween pin board, maybe. I don't know. But uh, certainly, as we round the year into next year, um, I'm going to maybe start working on some of my projects I've talked to you about a little bit already in some other videos, maybe a haunted cinema and so forth. But I look forward to finding some interesting pins on those and hope you'll share that journey with me. Again, though, until then, uh, that's it for today. So take care, guys, and happy haunting.